stop <laughs> yawning. <laughs> hey. Hi. <laughs> stop yawning. yawning. I'm not yawning. Listen, welcome to Drinking Broette. She was yawning. Listen. No, I was doing like. I was just like doing a fake like scream, <laughs> like an air scream. That's what it is. The minute you <laughs> yawn, I yeah. yawn, and then no, I, I start getting yawning. Tired. Yeah, this, I was this yawning. Is why you gotta chug it? Look, the wine. It's, it's been a day. Oh, and you guys, we're giving you the show that no one ever asked for, which was us drunk. Yeah. Well, no, you guys go. <laughs> we're not it's drunk like, yet. We're no, not we're drinking. Not yet, but we're gonna be drinking, and um, it doesn't take. Mm, much much no. so by the end we will be yeah it Anyways. literally takes me two white claws with the guys during the podcast where i'm like oh at crap. the end of it i'm like oh i'm kind of feeling it yeah don't yeah. say something stupid yeah, yeah. tiffany uh, and then you're just like sweating looking forward <laughs> that's how i am no i'm just joking it's i like just a, start talking i always sweat more me too um i really do a lot it's been a day i really need this mm. so cab you're like your cabernet savon i like a cab I don't know why. Favorite. It's kind of like why I like, I, I know nothing about wine and I am not. I don't either. Like I think I just pronounced it wrong in all honesty. A cab? Cabernet? Cabernet. But how do you say the last part? Sauvignon. 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 Yeah, Cabernet yeah. Sauvignon. Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah. Not Blanc. No, not Blanc. That's white. Sauvignon Blanc is wine. See how confusing it is? It's That's so why confusing. I say cab. I yeah, feel cab. very bougie if I'm at a restaurant and they're like, what do you want to drink? I'm like, I'll take a glass of cab. I think the same way about coffee which dan has told me is stupid he actually called me the r word but really <laughs> mm, we know how dan can be yeah but anyway <laughs> I, I um i like coffee that's very dark and like tastes like coffee because uh -huh. for some reason in my mind that feels like it's more caffeinated even though that's not true <laughs> and i think that the same way about cab so you cab is like a stronger? little bit thicker and so I feel like it's stronger, and that's not true either. Did you always like dark red wine, though? When uh, you started off, no. It was it was uh, after I became a mom. Really? Yeah. Is when you needed the strong stuff. Yeah, because I was still trying to drink the way that I used to. Yeah. And once you become a mom, you will get this too. Where the the term "mom wasted" comes from the fact that like you you just lose your tolerance mm -hmm. for everything because you haven't drinking for that long sure. and then you're breastfeeding or whatever you may do and you're like not sleeping so you're not drinking there's a long period of time um that you don't drink and you lose all of your tolerance and yeah. so when you go out you drink the way you think that you can yeah when you do before mom's night out and then you just get fucking blackout right and then On i'm sure the next day is horrific yeah because you're getting up probably that night kids know yeah so you're up <laughs> They know Mom when you drank, go out, yeah, let earlier. me get up puking at 3 a.m. And you're like, yep, of course, every single time. Yeah. Um. So that's what mom wasted comes from. So oh, I had I've to never do, heard that term before. I have to do wine because I could just control it. Mm -hmm. Whereas like if I have a vodka soda somewhere, I don't know how much is in there. I don't know. What it should I can, be regulated, but it should be. Know, but, you know, you know hand. someone. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. Or you make one at home or you just start drinking. And anyways. Yes. And sometimes they taste so good. Yeah. That you're that like, it tastes mm. just like soda. Yeah. Where you don't even know. You're like, oh, no, it's fine. And you just keep drinking them. Yeah. I could see that. So before I came here, I'm going to say a sentence that um, I don't know. I would probably think twice about saying, but I'm just going to say it because it's it. true. Be natural. Yeah. So I had I have a Prada jacket. It's vintage. It's a hand-me-down. I did fancy. not pay. I did not pay Prada prices for it. I had a friend in California that worked for Prada, and so she would get like these random, you know, sample size shit, and okay. just like give them to me. So mm -hmm. I do. I never have paid for a Prada, right? But Got I it. still have a jacket that says like Prada on it. So I was feeling cute tonight. We we're gonna go out later. Mm -hmm. I thought, let me put it on. So I put it on. I'm saying goodbye to my kid, to my 17 month, 16 month old. Sorry. And I'm like saying goodbye, give him a kiss. And he has this look on his face. And any mom will know this where it's just like he's either going. He doesn't know what's happening. Yeah. And it's just sort so of this face scared? of like it's just this all of a sudden he's scared of something. And he's either going to blow out shit his pants or he's going to puke all over <laughs> you. Those are the two things. And when you don't know what's happening with your body, how scary is it? Sure. That something's coming up and you don't know yeah. why. And you're like, so you have to like hold them. That's why you always get puke on you because mm. you can't, what are you going to do? Throw them on the ground? Yeah. Not on no, the Prada. No, child, Not on the no. Prada. So I'm like, I'm holding him. I'm looking at him. I look down at my jacket 
And I look at him and I'm like, all right, buddy. And he just like pukes all over the jacket. I'm like dry cleaning, obviously, immediately. Sure. But I'm just like, oh, my gosh, buddy. And you have to like hold them, you know, because they're it's a scary thing. So, you know, I'm just trying to I'm thinking like, oh. Uh, what could I have done, right? That's all yeah. you can do. You did the, I feel like you did the right thing. Oh my gosh. You know what I mean? Again, what was like the alternative? Well, I feel like set you would have felt really guilty. That if, oh, you, if you set down your child and was like, don't you dare puke and on I don't my care Prada about, jacket. And I don't care about shit like that, obviously. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know how much the jacket would cost in real life. Thank God for dry cleaning though. Yeah, exactly. It's like, who cares? But that happened right before I got here. Mm. So I definitely need... The wine to numb it and just chug it down. Mm. Do it up. And my alcohol uh, alarm went off, which yes, is... Yes, which is the uh, Law, Law and Order, order SVU. I could say it's SVU because they're... Dun, 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 oh, my I gosh. I love SUV. So much. I'm obsessed with that one. So much. My sister and I will so so we used to watch Law and Order when we were younger, right? Yeah. When McCoy was on there, remember? And the yeah. chick with the darker hair. Yes. And so we used to watch it with my dad. And like what would happen is my dad would be like, Girls, it's time to go to bed. And then we would just kind of sit there still and he would get really into the show. And then we would still awkwardly sit there and be like, Did he notice us? <laughs> like, I don't know if he did. Oh, and he just kept And then watching he just kept it. watching the show. So we got away with watching the show but staying up later. Oh, okay, so okay, we okay, just okay. would watch Law and Order with him and we both ended up liking it as we got older, which was funny. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's so. <laughs> it's I'm so with funny. That. Like, Marishka. Remember oh, yeah, Marishka the blonde. Mariska Hargitay. The blonde? No, that's the main gal. Oh, yeah, that's the main gal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's like queen. She's queen still Mariska. Oh, yes. Yeah. She's still on it, right? She's she won't on, leave. She's on SVU. Um, yeah. The Christopher Maloney guy left. Do you remember him? So he was like, he's her partner. He I'm was so her ba- partner. Oh, yeah, he was cute. Cute and like hardcore and kind yeah. of funny. And like, he's actually like a comedic actor, which is really funny. He was, in, yeah, he's in, been in a few comedies. Yeah. Which when I saw him in those, I was very surprised and happy. Yeah, but it's always the dramatic actors that actually are the most funny in comedies, I think. Because really? when you play things serious, there's nothing funnier than someone being really dramatic uh-huh. about stuff. Like, uh, oh, you mean over dramatic? No, so just you... like really playing something real. Oh, like, okay. there's, no, there's nothing funnier to me than someone that just doesn't let it go, right? And uh-huh. is really serious about something that's ridiculous. Mm hmm. That's hilarious. And and uh, dramatic actors can do that the best for sure. Well, good on him. Cute and talented. Yeah. But yeah. Well, so Cabernet is your drink of choice. Yeah. What's yours? Well, my this is my wine of choice. But okay. the thing is, when I first start off in wine. So I dated a guy when I worked at the Cheesecake Factory. Right. Brag. I <laughs> was underage. <laughs> right. Oh, wait. So I was underage. You and were had, allowed to work there, but you weren't allowed to drink. I wasn't allowed to drink. Yeah. Yeah. So but I'm letting everyone so know. So it wasn't child I was, labor. Yes. I was. Un- no, I was underage. Though. I was under the age of 21. Okay. To go drinking. But <laughs> yeah. I had a fake ID. Okay. So homeboy wanted to take me on a date and he was much older than me, like seven years older. Okay. And so I'm like Perfect. 19. He's like 26, 27, Perfect. whatever. And he takes me to a winery that he used to work at. And they didn't even card me, which I was like, woo. Yeah, because they like knew him, you know, when right? you like, date bartenders yeah. and they can like get you in places. And I feel yeah. like maybe I looked older than I really was, which I don't know. Sure, you was a absolutely good thing. did not, by Back the way. Then. Do you remember, like, if you look at a picture of you right now, you'll be like, oh my God, right? like, they knew, they had to know. You had to have known that I they looked like a child. When I was 18 and I have this face, only a little bit fatter, so it was like. Mine was super pudgy too. So I'm we like, looked how did like, they not know? They knew. They, they just, just decided ask. to, yeah. They were cool as fuck then. Right. Okay. So. Yeah. He took me to this place, and this is the first time I ever day drank my life, right? So he oh. takes me to do wine tasting, and of course, I didn't like any of the, the stronger red wines. I sure, start like, off with all the rosés awesome. and champagnes and Rieslings and everything else, and I love them. And I all I remember was afterwards him dropping me off back in my house, and I laid on my mom and dad's waterbed. Whoopsie daisy. <laughs> which what they year? still have a waterbed. No, they don't. Yes, they do. Ew. No, I, they still have a waterbed. But they put like the Tempur-Pedic stuff over, over it. it? Mm-hmm. Is that they funny? They like that 
They feeling? Do. Oh my gosh! Isn't I that, would puke. It's not every no. night. But the thing is, it's not that bad. It's I like a bad very motion thick <laughs> bag, apparently. <laughs> Then what's the point, bro? If you can't feel... That's what I'm saying. Like, people I that have water bed do. that's super hard. Oh, you're like, I remember just laying, have a mattress. So I remember laying on it, right? I remember plopping on it and just being... And I was already really drunk. So the whole, like, world was revolving, oh, like, God, shaking and, and like, spinning. But then laying on the bed, I was like, Mom. And she's like, are you okay? I was like, I don't know what's wrong with me. Like, <laughs> I think I have a whole cold. Room, the whole room was spinning. And she was just oh. like... She was so naive and oblivious. So she didn't even know that she you were drunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I was drunk. But yeah, that yeah. was my first wine experience. So after that, all I knew is I liked Riesling. Right. You like the sweet drink. Oh, for sure. And Lord, did I get some of the meanest looks from some of the wine snobs out there. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Can well, you imagine now? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I still like Riesling. Oh, yeah, for sure. There's a white Cabernet that I've tried before. But they you haven't... imagine some guy, 26-year-old, bringing a 19-year-old to this winery. Oh, and you're yeah, no. like. I would look and be like, dude, Ugh. that guy is trying to get her out of here. That guy is trying to bang it. I'd be like, get her out of here. Oh, what a little, <laughs> little what a little twat. I'd be such a snob. <laughs> get her out of here. She's a liability. No, I'm joking. As I spit my wine into this little yeah. crevasse. I'm a super Would snob you? as I get older. <laughs> well, I took my mom to Sonoma. Right. Oh my gosh, lucky. Well, it, we were. She was helping me move from one base to another, and it was like the best trip ever. And I took her to Sonoma because she loves wine. But my mom also is just has a very immature palate. Right. She's newer yeah, to wine. She, yeah. She loves just only white wine. Um. And so we, of course, only went to the places that had white wine at the wineries. And I just remember the looks that. Like I'm best friends with my mom now, so I remember the looks that she was given by some of the like snobby yeah, yeah, yeah. people there who did the pores and mm-hmm. i was like you son of a bitch don't you look at my mom yeah. that way let yeah. her chug the wine if she wants but to don't to be... judge her for spitting it out yeah. totally i think it used to be a lot worse where you now think? it's like you think it's chilled a bit i, I think so you think they Remember would have wine to. used to be really snobby like if you liked wine i don't know yeah i got and now probably. it's like everyone kind of drinks it there's tasting rooms everywhere i don't know you would think they would be more inviting because you would get more people who would like the wine and say, hey, would you like to try this? Would you like to try that? Yeah, you'd think. You would think instead of leaving it up to the stuck up people with their pinkies in the air. Get her out of here. <laughs> That's all I can think of yeah. now. Is just get her out of here. That's how it would be too. I'd whisper to the guy pouring. <laughs> get her out of here. <laughs> It'd be awesome. Have you ever I'm going to do it now. I know. You need to do it. I'm just going to find someone somewhere and just be, oh. Get her out of here. I might do it to you tonight. You probably will. I'm going to tell and the bartender, get you out of here. And he's going to be like, I probably will. He's going to be like, will. no problem. I'm no, way listen. ahead of you. I've been wanting to get her out of here for the last 10 minutes. <laughs> She's ridiculous. She's she won't drinking stop singing bop, 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 Riesling. Sweet Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> All night Riesling. <laughs> that sugary shit will get you. It will. That that was probably It'll the worst you. part. Yeah. I could never really get drunk off of wine. I would start with wine, which is probably what I'm going to do tonight. Uh-huh. And then I would move on and graduate to hard liquor. Sure. Because for me, the wine hangover. Have you ever gotten so wasted on wine before? All the time. It's all I drink. So the well, answer is Well, it is yes. all you drink. Oh, okay. So how's your hangover then? I mean, if I drink a lot, it's bad, but I feel like it's way worse. Like we went to New York recently and we went to this like one dinner thing mm-hmm. and it was with people that we needed to kind of impress. So I had a margarita. Ooh, or fancy. two, one or two margaritas. And it was like the next day I, I was puking, dying in the shower, old school style. Sure. Like old school hangover style where you're just like, uh, uh, I hate that. can't keep anything down. Right. Yeah. I have never had that from just drinking wine. True. Even I if not, I drink like oh, a I shit ton, back. I stay up late. Da, da, da. But if I have a tequila or a hard liquor, I am like. So tequila, like guaranteed every time I drink tequila, I will puke. Sure. Last time I was here, I did. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. And then the last time, even in California, when I drank Why were tequila, you drinking so much tequila then when you were here? It was, it was, it was like, just it like went down so easily. Yeah, yeah. It, and it the thing is, what you know what the problem is, too, is that I didn't really eat much that day because we did a podcast that day. Yeah. And I didn't eat much because, and I'm sure like nerves had to play a little thing of it at the time. And then also, when we ate dinner, 
You we and didn't I really sh- eat we that shared, much. We didn't eat that much. We shared I know. like some steak. I didn't we were have like any one carbs. of those. We were those girls. That we night. were those girls we that drank like, too uh, much but didn't eat enough. Yeah, and I had literally nothing to soak up the yeah. amount of alcohol. The guys in my were stomach. just like shoveling plates of food, and yeah. we we're like, and we were, oh, okay. we were too busy talking and drinking, talking, sharing, like yeah. not wanting to shove food in our face, even though that's probably what we wanted to do. Yeah, but we were both trying, and we had like first that was like the first time we met, so we're like. What do you want to get? Yeah, I don't know. Like, you, I don't, don't want to get. You want to like share? I don't want we, pizza with ranch. Are we gonna <laughs> Obviously, each I don't other, want or? that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, you want? M- we uh, shared meat? the meat. Yeah, we shared the meat. Yeah, and then a cauliflower, which we wanted fries probably, but didn't get them. Correct. Well, they we, didn't. I don't think they had them. No. And we were judged for getting meat bullshit. by the waitress. Remember? Do that? you remember? She was like, "Are you sure?" And we're like, "Yes, we're sure." Yeah, we're dumb, dumb. Women. We know what we want to eat. women. We probably should have gotten something else. Actually, we probably should have. We're grown women. We know what we want. She's but maybe like, you should have. Do you guys have, want to soak up the alcohol? Have, no, fuck you. Yeah, no. She was like, maybe. And we're like, ugh. And we were like talking shit about her the whole yeah. night. Ugh. Do you remember when she told us get what to get? Get her out of here. We should have listened to her. <laughs> for sure. Well, I've been drunk off of wine once. Like so bad. Like projectile vomit wine. Red. Low it was quality. not red. It was the box wine. There you go. The answer is. The proof and, is in the pudding. And I was, again, underage in college. It was my first year of college. I was a collegiate track runner. So I got like a full ride for track, right? Oh, my gosh. And um, it was at a decent university. They're in CAA, I think Division Two, maybe one now. I don't know. I didn't go there. You Which did. Which is good. But you should know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm saying they had they had graduated to something okay, better. Okay, okay, okay. Um, but all of us track guys would all get together and they would do like the tour de franza kind of thing which okay. would have the bag but then you would like run throughout the street did that in softball yeah however i was not a long distance runner so i hated that shit i was a sprinter okay which is why i get recruited but anyway we would end up doing wine chugs perfect and literally after you got on chugging an entire bottle full of wine you just project all on it on the ground and then continue to chug and those were by far the worst hangovers i think i've had in sounds my like life sounds like a personal nightmare why did you guys do that because we were in college <laughs> okay that and i was impressionable awful. and i did what other people did it sounds and awful. it was fun at the time and so you felt like sh- listen i could recover like that yeah back in the day yeah, that's true. Huh? A few hours it's later, it's not the same. I know, I know. I ate some grilled cheese, I know. some greasy bacon. You're ready to do like go out for the night. I know. Nowadays, Mm-mm. I'm recovering for three days, maybe, mm-hmm. and I might feel completely normal after a week. Yeah, that's my issue. That's and why even I don't drink then, you're anymore. still like, like you feel the guilt of it for some reason. You comes have guilt. Up. I don't know what. It's I'm wondering not if guilt. it's a mom guilt. Do you have a mom guilt? Um, I just have that every day because I'm a working. <laughs> mom um but i i i don't feel bad about like going out or anything like that but it's i think i've always had that you know that thing where you wake up you like wake up too early you mm. want to sleep in I so bad i always wake up early yeah but you wake up early and then you start thinking about like what you did and, and you're like you why drink? did i act like an idiot did i say anything sometimes and oh, then you I always start say something stupid yeah or i act stupid in some way and i go why did i do that i hope these people aren't judging me see oh so I'll i wake up too that. early and i'll start with that where it's like, fuck, and then you can't go. You need to sleep in. Like, you need to sleep to at least 10, whatever you did, right? Yeah. But you can't. And now you're thinking about all the shit. And now you're like, oh, I have to, like, let me get up. You know those people that, like, try and, like, overcompensate for it? Let me let me go for a run. Let me redecorate the whole house. I used because to go you for a run. Because you feel so bad. Yeah. I used to be that person who used to go for a run. Did it help? It was, you know, it, was, it actually did. But it was when I lived in California. And I would go to St. Anna to drink with my Czech friend. Alex oh, yeah. and her and I were like the best drinking buddies ever. We'd have the bombest times. And so what I would do the next morning, because I would naturally just wake up early, yeah. right? It's like the alcohol going, get the hey, fuck up. Hey, idiot. Listen, you're a loser. You drank way too much last night. You need to work out. Yep. And I would drive five minutes to the beach and I would run on the beach from pier to pier. Ugh. And I honestly, I loved it though, because I love the ocean. So for me, yeah. it was like, oh, and I would get and all the shit out of my system. Better. Okay, It made me feel better. But I don't think I would run anywhere besides the beach. And that's the problem here reality. is we don't have amazing weather like that. So no. I think in California, I would do that for sure. I think. I yeah, would, the weather was gorgeous. So you, it's like you, you could, could not always, pass it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would wake up. And the problem is, too, is that so Alex like California is super expensive, right? And Alex doesn't have the most money. So she lives in an area where they're all kind of closely together and she didn't have AC in her building. 
So she had her windows open. Remember that? Yeah. yeah, she had her windows open, and her neighbors are literally boom like right there within reaching distance yeah and they were like a mexican family and they wake up super early every morning and be really loud and yelling at each other and so we would you would naturally wake up early because of it <sighs> so it was you would not want to sleep through no. that so i just eventually just got up and i had to clear my mind and go run on the beach after a night of drinking and then of course you take a nap later on once you get home well i know you're better it's what you, well, that was what I had to do. That was 2014, 15. Listen, I don't do that now, so don't feel too bad about yourself. Get her out of here. <laughs> Get her out of here. God damn it, you runner. Get her out of here. Get God. her out of here. Um, so we'll actually, let's go into some stories after I the have sponsors. a lot of really embarrassing drunken stories to tell. Sadly. I have, like I said. I know you have some. Don't, I don't you some. dare hold you, back on me, Jesse. My memory is horrible, and I... I think I, I feel like I blacked out for for my entire twenties. I feel like I did too. So like, but I have so many I friends have like that tell me bits and pieces of stories, and then I have really bad like get in trouble stories. Do you have pictures of these stories? Pictures of the stories. So I have pictures. God, no. You do? My fr- um, yeah. I have I have the best friends in the world. They take pictures of me when I'm all fucked up, How? and then they tell me about it the next day, and then for years to come. No, I hate that shit. My best That's friend like from my college. Least favorite. My best friend for the last 15 years will still tell some of these stories about me. All right. Well, let's get into them. Yeah. After the sponsors. Yeah. <laughs> after our first sponsor, Ghostbed.com. Listen, tonight after we drink and party, I am going to, whoa, whoa there, cowboy. I'm going to need a little bit more of that, so don't pour all that in there. Oh, you no, have another two. bottle. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> I got you. Thank God. Listen, we're going to need a good place to sleep tonight. <laughs> so it needs to be a ghost bed. I'm, I'm very excited. comfortable bed. Yeah. yeah. How is the bed at the Airbnb? Obviously, you need. You know what? I'm actually staying in. A, I'm staying in a bougie Airbnb, but I okay. think that it's mainly because of the sheets. They could do. Yeah, bed. It's not they the could bed. do with a better bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They could use with a ghost bed. Yeah, everyone can use a ghost bed. It's yeah. pretty much the. I I will go to bed. I I'm blaming it on the ghost bed. I'm not sure what it is, but I will go to bed. And lay in bed, watch TV way earlier than maybe I it's should. So comfy I'm just, now, like, so comfortable. It's like a cloud, and I could just get to watch my murder crime documentaries, and just like go to sleep with like it feels a like a murderer's you're hug. <laughs> just so a, you're literally a criminal's floating hug. in the clouds, mm-hmm. watching murders on television. It's just like Henry, right now, it's, it's I go heaven. to bed with Henry Lee Lucas, just giving me a nice little hug, hug. before bed. That's beautiful. Not killing me like he did everybody else. Yeah. But you're but watching for him me. He doesn't else. because yeah. I'm on the ghost ped sure. and I can watch those kind of things and be fine with it because it's just such an awesome night's <laughs> sleep. So they're having a holiday sale. As I you know, we can't a say sale right now. We can't say Christmas. Holiday. We can't say we, oh, we have to say holiday. Because Merry to Christmas. Be, you all. I know you assholes. Now listen, <laughs> because of what Hanukkah and. Kwanzaa no it's just people are being politically exactly incor- like they're being pussy they're being why a can't bunch I of say vaginas happy, why can't I, say I should be able to say Merry Christmas happy if Hanukkah. it's Merry Christmas for me it's Merry Christmas listen if I want to say Merry Christmas it's Merry Christmas wow yeah wow she's taking a stand and happy holidays she's taking a stand and she's saying Merry Christmas I think I Trump am. does that too doesn't he what? he says Merry Christmas I think I don't know I think Trump takes a stand on it. Oh, good for him. He's one of those, which I like. If you if it's it's if it's your thing, you should go ahead. Yeah. If that's your holiday and you see someone, it. anyways, you see someone with the tree and whatever you say, I Merry, say Merry Christmas. Christmas. Obviously, you're not Jewish. You no. can't have the tree if you do. Anyways, whatever. Go whatever. bed. I'm sorry. I've gone off on a on a tangent. But anyways, they have holiday deals fifty per fifty percent off an adjustable base, which is. That's legit. Their biggest ticket item, so you're basically getting that shit for the best price you're going to get right now. I think. Yeah. Since they've since we they've ha- we've had them as a sponsor, this is the best deal that they've had. I've heard they have like USB and plugins and everything. Dude, on the adjustable bed. base is the shit. You said you have one. You're going to have to get rid of it and get this one. Oh, we'll definitely have to get a new mattress for yeah, sure. You're going to get a good. I bed. got. I bought my temper t- myself a Tempur-Pedic when I got divorced, but that's like the guest bedroom. We're going to need like a California king. Oh, you can't have the same bed, ghost bed that you've been doing God knows what on, right? No, yeah, not no. That's you why got I made, it after That's why I made my husband get a new bed. When you we have first to. got together. You have to. Yeah. You don't want to be sleeping with those ghosts. <laughs> a, c- a complete cum dumpster full. Uh, of- 
on the mattress. You never know. (laughs) God. The girl could have brought her lizard over. Just let the lizard crawl all over. The lizard trails on those beds. What the fuck Like Ross saying one time that he dated a girl that had a lizard, and I just go, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" And lizard ownership. And you broke up with her for me. Wow. I know. Ooh, I feel so fucking good. (laughs) Obviously, you were gonna break up with her. She had a lizard. Duh. You can't have a lizard. Not in captivity. It's not fair. (laughs) She's very exotic. Very exotic. No, she was a dirt bag. Obviously, you don't have a lizard in your house unless you're gross. Anyways, good riddance. Um, Bye, Bye, lizard lady. Oh, ghostbed.com <laughs> forward slash drinking bros. Yep. Drinking bros. It is drinking bros. I think even when we do get our own um, whatever. Sponsors. Yeah. Sponsors. We're, it, that one will definitely still be drinking bros because it Which is for Ross Which we definitely have Revolution. some in mind. Yeah. Ones that we want. Like the ones that you use and we like use. Like Tesla, if you want to. If oh, you like Tesla sponsor, cars? If you want to eh. sponsor us. I'll take Daily Harvest. Yeah. I want Daily Harvest if you're listening. I'll take a wine club. Yep. Any kind of wine club where I get like wines picked out for me, you know? Yeah. Anyways, but we do have. We do have the Lux, Luke. Luke Belair. I Belair. Because they have a Lux brand. Dang it. We can't open these because I think eventually by the end of the show, we're going to be popping one of these open. Yeah. I but feel not, like. Not the drinking bros You can't one, do the ones the with legit the, ones. With the customized uh, Drinking Bros thing, but uh, LukeBelair.com forward slash Drinking Bros. L-U-C-B-E-L-A-I-R-E dot com mm-hmm. forward slash Drinking Bros. Um, I think it's 20% off. Anyways, it is, you yeah, need 20. to, yeah, you need to get at least, just get one box of these. Even if you like bring it. A great it, gift. A what? A great gift. It's a great gift. And then also with the holidays. You're going to need to bring stuff to people's houses. Obviously, you do not go empty handed. I no. always say this, no matter what it is. Even if you don't have money, you can make cookies from the freaking toll house thing for what? Two dollars, I think. Maybe you can get one of those yeah. for. Bring something always. But this, people will be like, oh, shit. Oh, she's oh, fancy. Shit. And then if they listen to the show, then they're going to know that it's really nice, really fancy. So just get one box. Try it. Yeah. I'd st- I say the gold or Lux. If you like rosé, get the rosé because it's super, it's like a really high-end rosé. But the gold has been a hit in has my. It? Oh, there we go. Thank you, Jamie. Look at this. Yes. Ask and you shall receive. Wait, are we going to drink French this luxury. with the wine? I think, no, I think once we get to the end of the wine, we're going to have to be like, <laughs> okay. Psh- Pop I the, do. I like pop that. The champagne, or maybe we should just open it. And <laughs> this take does a sip. look really good, though. I feel like if Very you put a little bit of this with wine, it would make it like a sparkling wine. Oh, you're gross. What? <laughs> oh, you you're like oh, you're a dirt bag. Any of do the you have al- a lizard? Give me all of the alcohols. <laughs> Get her out of here. <laughs> Are you kidding me? What is have wrong you with not, you? Listen, have you, you not heard? Lazy. Have you not heard of? Um, do you want to open it? Irish Someone trash cans know. or Long Island? Oh wait, you they mix. Like tons of alcohol together. It's no, the same you told thing. me about the Irish. You put trash champagne, can. champagne, champagne, and I wine would do, together. I do a champagne. You want this? I would do. I was gonna open it, but you can. Pull no, it. you got it. Um, You're more I, bougie than me. I do a um, a sh- champagne cocktails, right? So if you do like do a you? vodka, cranberry, <gasps> or some kind of whatever with a little thing of That's champagne smart. on the top. I never thought of that. So you know that you what? Yeah, I heard champagne's a little bit even better too with some fruit in it. You know what I mean? So good. And it gives a nice little fruity flavor. If you're on a diet, champagne is the best thing for you to drink. Although I know you guys don't always want to. Yeah. But this is actually Well, it's easy one that I drink. feel like you can get drunk off pretty easily, right? It is, but it's hard. And it's it's good because it's hard to drink really fast. Mm. You know, it's like very dr- bubbly and dry. Yeah. So it keeps you uh, keeps you civilized and keeps you skinny. Listen, now listen, whatever the housewives do of Orange County, Champers, right? And New I'll York, have the Champers. and El, whatever all the place Beverly Hills, I want to do because they're my idols. <laughs> oh my god, hush! <laughs> Get her out of here. Wouldn't it be funny if they really were? But no, no I listen. see them. I see them do drink now. Listen, champagne now. all the time. Oh I wait, have something. We I gotta have, hear this. I have something controversial to say about that. Okay, hold on. Woo! Ah! Man, We're that sounds like a lady boner. We need to make a big <laughs> old lady boner. Are you saying that because you know it pisses me off? No, does it? Yes. 
I say it on many shows where I'm like, I hate when girls say lady boner. It makes me so uncomfortable. Obviously, now you have to. I have to. It makes me so (laughs) uncomfortable. I'm just like, oh, it like makes me think of a lady boner. I mean, just straight up lady. It probably makes you think of a big clitoris. Just ching. You know why? Because it's what we were talking about earlier. We're like, we don't have, we don't have to, co- you know what I mean? We don't have to be one of the We dudes. don't have to say it's a boner. We need to think of something else. Big old lady boner. I'm getting a, ni- a n- <laughs> I'm getting a couple of hard nips. Oh, I something like Something that. that we actually have. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, that makes my nips super hard. And even that, that's making me uncomfortable too. See, actually, I don't okay. know what. <laughs> all these things make you feel uncomfortable late the way you said lady boner like right at my face mm-hmm. i thought you knew like the way that you said it i thought you knew i don't really say that i feel often. like you did i don't know i really no, I feel like you're lying to I me i don't really say that often but i think it's funny to say <laughs> giving me a <laughs> but you like made a point to be like oh yeah it's given me a lady boner so Who i thought knows? you'll never know it's a mystery i know it's a mystery i think you do know <laughs> god damn it Anyway, folks, oh, Luke, Luke Belair. Belair, you guys. And um, I guess we'll just drink out of the bottle. Oh, that is super. Um, mm. <laughs> I have some. I have a hot oh, take. Let me taste it. I have a hot take controversial thing to say. What? About the housewives, which you were saying, like, they're my idols, right? Which, I was kind of joking, but I do love no, but them. Listen, I do like watching them. Yeah. But you have I do. You know how they all get divorced? get her out of here yeah so, um <laughs> you know they all get divorced pretty much yeah. uh, once they get on the show here's my theory behind it why do you think so that it is? does actually empower them they mm. make their own they actually make really good money doing it i've heard that they yeah. make their own money they're hanging out with their friends they're going on trips they're like you know becoming their own person outside of having kids and being in a relationship Obviously, if they get divorced, it wasn't the best relationship well, in the you know first what? place, right? I but they like... didn't have the money yeah. to get out of it, which is a lot of people's oh, issue, shit. right? I didn't think about and that. So they're like, the guy makes all the money, you're this rich housewife. And they and felt then stuck. They feel stuck, right? Wouldn't you? Yeah. You're like, you have this lifestyle. All your friends are dependent on you having this lifestyle, whatever. So I actually think, again, it's a, good thing. it's a hot take and it's a controversial thing. But I think it actually empowers women in a different way where these girls are actually finding their own power and then they end up fucking leaving the guy well and you know what or he doesn't like it right true i also think it might expose a lot of things in their whole life and world yes they might be so used to staying in this bubble where they have a bunch of friends who just kiss their ass nonstop all day long and and i don't like them to get divorced with the young kids and either but once they're but you know what they're usually older kids need to grow up seeing a great example of their parents loving each other not fighting nonstop and think that that's okay and then grow up doing the exact same thing right yeah I think maybe a little bit too is that they see all these other women being treated probably the right way and more people like expo- their relationship being exposed on television and people going, that's oh, not normal. Dude, yes. People normally don't he do that. He shouldn't be telling you not sudden, to do this. Right. Yeah. The and whole go, time in their oh, head, shit. they're going, I thought so, but I wasn't sure. And maybe it's more clear because you, yeah. And so you get, and again, and you have money to leave. You have a platform now. If you stay on the show, yeah. you can still be divorced and stay on the show, right? And if you right. choose to do that and let the guy fucking spin out and leave you and stay on the show, you will continue I to- I did not think of that. Right? And so it's a it's a weird way to think of it, but everyone's always like, oh, they get divorced because you can't, you know- Because like, the show came Because the show marriage. fucks with it's them. The show no. Thing. No. The show takes away that thing, this age old thing that happens between men and women, which is the money power struggle. And it's been mm. happening since the dawn of time. I don't know if your mom told me, told you, yeah. but my mom always told me to have your own money, mm-hmm. just a little bit. Have a little bit of your own money that nobody knows about just in case. And her mother told her and the girl and the mom before her, like, it's this thing that moms kind of always say. Well, I've always had my own bank accounts. I never shared. Right. Even when I was married now and before. So now you have your own. I have my, we both have our own separate ones. Yeah. Still. We don't have a shared one. Yeah, I never had a shared one even before with my ex husband. Thank the Lord, because well, he was a, make, he, was a, he listen, was shitty with money. You make your own money though, too. Correct. So when you are once you have, once you get into this world of like once having kids or having two kids, and you can't work as much, and you do need to have access to money for if you know your family wants to reach for a fucking paper towel and have it be there, and they want to just reach for food and have you have to be 
you have to make that happen yeah right? no, that's smart that's and very so smart. you kind of need it's it'd be you know we have separate and and one that's together right mm-hmm. so we have our separate ones but then the one that's together is you know basically it's his money is our money and my money's my money sure right? <laughs> My husband because, always says that. He yeah. goes, what's mine is yours and what's yours is yours. Right? I'm like, God, you're so smart. I love you. Right? <laughs> yes. But if you no. get into a place where like these women have, where they have kids, they start staying, they stay home mm-hmm. because it's just more financially, in, in many cases, it's financially better to do that instead of paying for the child care in order for you to, it's the shitty cycle sure. of women working. But we just, it costs so much more for us to be in the workforce, right? Mm -hmm. Because we have to make sure that our kids are taken care of. Yeah. Um, So you get into the cycle of that. And I think a lot of these women did. And then they end up getting stuck. And there's no other way. And when Andy, when Andy Cohen comes to Colin, that's You're their gonna one. You're going to fucking answer. That's their one chance to A, make their own money, make their own name for themselves, mm-hmm. get their own platform. And if they use it in the right way, they can get the fuck out of that relationship that clearly wasn't good enough. And if the guy leaves them because they have too much fame or they're well, then too busy they at to work, to then they shouldn't with. have been together anyway. So I right. think that it weeds out. What should have happened the bad. anyways, and it takes away that money power struggle. You know who I is- love single? What? Ramona. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Ramona is the best single. I hated her in the relationship, by the way. Oh, I did. She was awful. She, she was, was bitter. She was you know awful, who was also bitter, bitter? Weird. was Tamara. Ba- Tamara was very upset oh, yeah. in relationships, and so was um, Vicky. You could tell when people are in toxic relationships because- They're it, different. It, it, and even, um, oh, I can't think of her name, who's also on OC- um what's she look like dark hair. blonde no dark hair dark hair newer older she's old newer in the newer season yeah of kelly OC. kelly she was when, blonde no kelly's no kelly is dark hair kelly, kelly dodd kelly dodd is dark hair she's like dirty blonde maybe dark hair but she when she was in a very toxic marriage right she was so upset i mean she has got anger issues but you can tell because yeah. people are projecting oh right? no you're right yeah I fucking People love her, project. by the way. She's now. so honest, but she says some ruthless shit when I like she's it. super mad. I know. I like it. Do you? Oh, in that show, I think she's doing. The other thing is, I think she's doing what you she needs to do. You, you think she's just being dramatic? You think she's bringing to. in the by the way, fucking if you're, viewers? That's the other thing. If you're boring mm. on that show, well, that's they why will Tamara's kick you around. off and they will fire you. Dude, Tamara is the pot stir of the OC because she, needs she her job, just dude. brings it in. She brings. She wants that money. People want to see it. Mm-hmm. I mean, listen, people watch that shit for a reason, right? I don't really watch a lot of TV, in all honesty, because I, I, I have this stuff all recorded on DVR. Yeah. Was it, is it called DVR? Yeah. Is it? DR, I feel, DVR. It's DVR. It DVR? Wow. I felt really stupid saying that. That is for a an second. old school. It is old school term. Yeah. But um, you, it's on cable, but you yeah, DVR'd but it. You, yeah. But you save it. Okay. I will watch it later on when I get home from like work at the end of the day. I'll, I'll watch it, binge watch it on maybe a weekend. Right when I have some free time yeah. after cleaning the house, and it's kind of like a guilty pleasure of mine. I'll watch that stuff. Yeah, definitely, and definitely, I'm drawn to some of the drama. Like, ooh, ooh, oh my god, what's gonna happen next? Oh my god, why would they talk to each other? Wait, let me see. What's I can gonna happen. only take so much of it. Mm. I love it for a second, and then it starts to get really grating. But um, yeah, for that one, I can watch maybe two. Mm-hmm. But um, if I can tell that they're trying to, me too. To stay on the show, basically, and stay relevant, I'll get you know, I'll I'll check out. Yeah, but um, you know what? Real. They're fighting for their fucking lives, basically, yeah. at that point. Like, um, and Kelly True. Dodd, of course, she was getting divorced. She's like now in this tiny apartment. Like, she is stirring the pot so she could keep in the fucking money. Sure. Well, way. she's now engaged. Do what some you got to do. Fox. That's right. I guess or whatever. That's right. I don't know. But so let me ask you this. Do you like other reality shows like The Bachelor or Bachelor? I do watch The Bachelor. I do. You know what? OK, so for me, I when think comes- Bachelor has a good sense of humor about itself. But go ahead. I agree. When I no joke before I joined the military. Right. So 2005, 2006, like when The Bachelor first started, I don't even know when it originated. I know it's it's, it's literally been, been on it's for been 23 on for so seasons or something long. crazy. Yeah. 
I, my mom and my sisters and I used to watch it. Like we would bond as chicks, and it was like our thing. It was like what yeah. we did with my mom. We loved it's it so much, funny, dude. And I vividly remember being in basic training, being in boot camp, right? And my mom would write me these letters and just tell me, like, I ask me how I'm doing. It. And on the border of the letters, she'd be like, "Oh, by the way, like Chris picked so and so and so and so, and he sent See? her home." And it was like it was a very great memory that i have yes so i actually didn't watch it for a while and then i had a bunch of girlfriends um all the wives of the guys i work with they all would do like a monday get together right and we'd all and drink wine it's like, yeah and eat crackers and cheese and it's stuff it's a whole thing and we'd all watch it and i got back into it again and while i could think it's completely unrealistic and it's probably a terrible premise to find someone i still like watching it well um, that's how me and Ross got together what? using the same. Well, he he. Well, first of all, he me tooed me, right? Whoa, a second. But Wait it a worked second. out. What did we tell so me about I, this? We did this movie called. Uh, I'm going to brag for a second, but w- we did this movie called Fifty K and a called Call Girl, mm-hmm. and it, he had hired me to do this job. So he was my boss. I had just done like a movie. He had seen it, and he cast me in this movie. And the movie was. You travel around, I traveled around with the crew and cast for 30 days around the U.S. doing all this crazy shit. So we like jumped out of planes, we flew MIGs, we like took mushrooms in Joshua Tree, we did all this crazy shit, right? That's fun, yeah. Yeah, but that's the same psychological model that they use for The Bachelorette, which is if you do something crazy together, like you jump out of a plane together or something, you are bonded in this weird way. That's a very big bonding experience. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. Or if you go on, you know, you go to an amazing resort Mm -hmm. or like all this crazy run with the bulls. They do these crazy things so that you're weirdly bonded very quickly. Sure. Where The Bachelor is only like. I was it's like, like how long six is it? weeks or something. It's not a long time. That and by the short. end, people are... Are getting married. Yeah. Well, I mean, getting engaged. Right. That's but they ridiculous. use that. They use all these like psychological oh, methods okay. of like weird scare ta- tactics. Like they'll get like... For people to get close and To open get up. close and to like open up and to feel really bonded and really close to someone. Sometimes I feel like, in all honesty, some of these girls feel forced to open up because... Yeah. They sit there and go like, hey, like, I didn't want to tell you this, but I'm like competing yeah, with like you know 30 other part. women. So I'm just going to like tell you the deepest, darkest secrets of my life so you can keep me around one more week because it's like <laughs> a competition. Tell you. And like, yeah, so my parents killed themselves and like, <laughs> no, it's I'm, always something really shitty. It's I'm an not orphan so- and like, <laughs> <laughs> it's something that they have to like reach for, right? Yeah. What Hello? the fuck was that? Um, it's they have <laughs> they have to like reach for it, right? They do. So they'll yeah. be like, okay, I need to open up. So like, one time, this at band camp guy exactly this guy <laughs> in high school like said he was gonna kill himself and like it really just affected me. You know, they're like need yeah. to have this moment with the guy because the guy keeps saying this, you need to open up. You blah blah blah. This is how they edit it. They're, he's like, hey, so yeah, Sarah hasn't really opened up lately, and I'm like yeah. thinking about sending her home, and it's gonna take like something because she like, doesn't have some weird tragic because, bullshit and then in her like, life. Hey, yeah, so I was actually a conjoined twin at birth, and <laughs> I, like we got cut apart, and I lost my sister. Do you want to see the head? And she like opens the jacket, and the head's right there, and she's like, you're welcome. Is that open enough for you? <laughs> and he's like, oh my god, I love you. I'm gonna I love you. Forever. You opened and up then, to me, and then keeps her one week, and then like makes her leave because she like fucking put out or something exactly or the best part is the 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 most the weirdest part to me is the fantasy suite right Mm. where you like have sex with someone and then you send them home and it's that's where it starts to get very normal for me where i go yeah of course yeah you have sex with them you're done and now you're yeah because you don't know what the other people are like you know, exactly. the best part so of that there you go. is Hannah Brown fucking that, what that pilot dude. The pilot dude. Three times Four or something. Four times. Four times. I'm sorry. Yeah. So my. I'm sending him home. Oh, here's my thing with that. If homeboy could fuck four times in a night. How. You keep him. He's are- a keeper. You that dumb. He's a keeper. That you sent him home and went for Jed. For Jed. My Why God. did you give up Tyler? What's his name? Who's the pilot? You're getting heated. Yeah, Pete. Pete Peter, but he's, Peter? he's the bachelor right now. Yeah, but so there was so like a won. sneak peek from Dancing with the Stars because mm-hmm. I watched that too because my husband watched it with me actually. 
and it showed do you me. like dancing with the stars i kind of do my mom loved i it. love dancing when i was younger so it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's something i've always wanted to do still so i watch it because i'm living through them okay cool but so they showed a sneak peek of get Hannah. her out of here <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. this bitch is okay. lady boners so, and dances yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i like to dance but anyway <laughs> so uh yeah but it showed a sneak peek of her talking to peter on the bachelor and saying it's i you know how they oh, like they bring twist back it around the last one. and they showed her saying that she sold feelings for him and i was like it's like excuse me what what so that bitch she tried to do it with tyler c too i do calm I down with tyler c about 15 times a night yeah exactly they didn't have sex excuse me what well, else is that guy you good know what for? she said Bruh, the conversation me, right? is not fucking right it's definitely lacking she so. even said that in the fantasy suite that she purposely did not want to have sex with him because she knew their whole relationship was sexual and i'm like bitch you are wrong but if you know that then you know there's nothing moving forward why don't you just have sex with her. him and have the best sex of your life most likely Dude, she was probably getting a lady boner when he was. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> when when he was massaging on her, because I was even oh. getting turned on just watching that. I was like, dude, you can massage that massage me all day long. That massage. <clears throat> right? Sorry, I am sorry. Wow, but that massage really here. scene, dude. <laughs> dude, I, I will say this again. Tyler, hey, C, when he opens, girl, when he opens his mouth, it. it's it's a no go. <laughs> but my god, anytime like he's not dancing? speaking, no. <laughs> No, I didn't like his dancing like, or talking. Yeah. And I didn't. I thought those pants got a little short they were, sometimes. They were no. First of they all. They really went up. First they of were all, those really pants were way too tight. Yeah. And then his story was a little bit. He kept talking about um, his big tragedy was that he used to be rich and now he's poor. Was Remember? it? <laughs> so like, no, it was his not. His big story that he kept telling was his family used to live in Jupiter, Florida and have this amazing place he took her remember on the yeah rip, i remember that no i remember that in the but i i was so or something and pointed by... oh i know you couldn't hear anything he was saying i was probably. like he's shirtless yeah exactly you were just like hannah like he's awesome he's perfect <laughs> you're like yeah. no you can't have a conversation with him calm down yeah. but um he took her through the intercoastal and was just like that's where my family used to live and we said we have this big booming business and then the real estate something hit no way and then we lost everything and that was the story that he just like kept bringing up and so all i hear in my mind is poor poor you're poor i can't you're poor do you think but the, you ba- the bachelor about network how was like listen you need to have some type of sob story i don't care what the fuck it absolutely. is but you better come up with one absolutely and you need to tell it as often as you can absolutely and so his was like i have had a really good life so we went from like affording prada jackets to you know affording like coach stuff. yeah i don't know and you don't really feel bad for him but then he's really sad about it so you feel bad but then you hear what he's actually saying and you're like it sounds like you're crying about being poor i never heard what you're you saying to, of course you didn't because i was so distracted by his of course you didn't v. you're ridiculous the v <laughs> yeah i know Oh, no. but just like his boy i mean he was he was everything he you know was what? supposed to be he was tall no he, he was, was perfect well you, you said per- until he opened up his mouth yeah until he starts talking and i'm sure the producers told him like hey bro exactly limit your words limit your words but they also said hey you're not really having a lot you of depth like she is going to send you home do you have anything <laughs> that you could they always do that with them right do you have yeah. anything that you can like tell her that's gonna like really reel her in tug on those heartstrings and like take you to another level which is what they always say right it's like i'm not here to make friends and i want to take it to the next level and she's not opening up or some they have all these like phrases there's like the bachelor phrases that they always say which i love you know who i was surprised to stuck around longer than he really needed to was luke p right was luke p yes yeah well he was the the lukeness monster like what the fuck and okay so i grew up in a very christian household right like yeah. very strict christian values and morals and i will admit that one part of i i noticed growing up with christianity is that you get dealt a lot of hypocrites where they want to sit there and preach the word and the gospel to you and tell you like hey you oh, sure, do sure, sure. that's exactly what but he then was they are, like they do just as much shit right so i'm i've learned so much on my own and for me, I felt like he gave that whole Christianity, biblical, like, name a very bad name. Yeah. <laughs> like, super controlling. Very, like, I don't even know how to put it, how he was. Like, demanding. He was very controlling. You know? 
he was a little bit like stalker style. Yes. You know, like we were talking about those guys. Manipulative. Tinder guy that like. Yes. Very manipulative. I ironed a shirt for you Make guy. Her, he made her feel like shit for being intimate with someone else when he was but a look, sex whore before. Exactly. But look, in real life, if that was a real life thing where he was dating her. And sh- and he heard like, say no cameras around. Right. Sure. In a real life situation, he really likes this girl. She's talking about having sex with other people. A, that he had a real reaction to it, right? No, he had a real reaction. That would be in well, real life, but you're not in real life. You're on The Bachelor, so like you need to. But he just, he like was he, he just wasn't even. Well, that's the hardest part about The Bachelor. Like, so my husband will watch it with me sometimes because he knows oh, yeah. that I like it, and he'll make funny jokes. By the way, they it. like it. No, well, he he but likes it because he, he likes it. He will make funny jokes throughout it, and I think it's cute. And then we probably end up fucking most likely after it because I'm like, I feel so lucky to have him after watching all those douchebags on screen. So he loves it. He loves it. Mm-hmm. So um, he'll you know he'll make his little comments here and there. But I can only imagine because to me this is an unrealistic fact. I'm not gonna date someone and start falling in love with someone who's dating 15 Mm -hmm. 30 even five other people listen if you are kissing other people while i'm falling in love with you something's fucked up yeah and to me i don't know how people do that on tv and i think part of it's like i want to be famous i'm gonna blow up my instagram and you know you don't know them that well so you you don't really think about it in real terms it's like they know them for a week and they don't see them all the time. So it's like, no, they, when he first remember when he first told her that he loved her, he had only hung out with her for 20 minutes. So that's why it was like, that's calm weird. down. Luke P you're a stalker. You have that problems. Is stalkerish, right? That's a little bit. You know what? I feel like someone's really getting into their head and convincing themselves. I'm sure they have plenty of alone time to like really go crazy and like, no, I do. Oh, love they do. Them. No, I do. They keep, love them, them. they keep them isolated. They liquor them up. Daily. Oh, Do I heard that I mean? they um, yeah. actually asked them what their favorite alcohol is and they purposely keep that on hand. Yeah. Which, and you if know, you're filming all day, you have nothing to do, you yeah. have no phone or anything, you're just going to start drinking it, whatever. Jesus. Noon. I, this is why I can never do it. And this is why I would never do it, even if I was younger. Let's say if I was 10 years younger, yeah. right? 23. Ugh. They would love me on TV because I would get wasted and say stupid shit and they'd be like, she makes the best TV. But then later on, I'd be like, oh my God, I'm so depressed because yeah. why would I want to be shown like that on television? Mm-hmm. And once you, you get I mean? in the machine, you get into the bachelor machine, right? You do. So that's why you keep you get seeing stuck the same it. ones always well, around. Once you're done, so you get fed into this bachelor machine, so you do it. And then you grow into like this very instant fame, but then it's very short lived. And so it seems like a lot of these people do whatever they can to continue to stay somewhat famous. So they'll do Bachelor in Paradise, yeah. possibly, or they'll take on some deal with like different, was it different glasses or like some fucking clothing company? Different something. glasses? What? You never heard of that? It's called different or different. I don't know, but it's a, a, a glasses brand. Oh, and they okay. hit I thought up you were all, just saying. No, it's called, it's a glasses brand. It's called different or something. And they hit up all the Bachelor or Bachelorette yeah, yeah, contestants yeah. and have them all fab fit fab fun fit bum box they get all the fucking- hey guys fab fit bum box hey by the way if you want to hit me up anyways we need to talk about some drunken stories because we're getting to like the end of the show oh jesus oh i mean wait. not really but we need to tell a couple okay well because we did tease it we do we are we are in the <laughs> we're <laughs> we're in our wait let me start over words are really hard <laughs> <laughs> in the, is this the fourth show or the fifth no it's quattro okay it's quattro thank you jamie wait and who jamie, broke the jamie bottle out there jamie jamie you brought you broke the bottle outside no. Oh, oh no no that was dan right Ross. oh oh what Ross, the hell was he still doing here bag. get him out of here get him out of here anyways show four yeah again we decided to give you the show that nobody asked for which was us drunk talking about the past Lorette. By the way, you're welcome. But anyway, Luke Belair, Lux in Cabernet, your dirtbag is fucking I'd like amazing. To meet your, I'd like to meet your lizard later. Oh, I mean, are you kidding me? Give me the, my the, lord. Give are you kidding? Me. This is great. I'll no. try it. Okay. Oh god. Okay. So here, here are the. Anyways, um, so we we have a I'm habit have of pick. You guys will notice we have a habit of teasing something at the front at the beginning of the show and then never getting it to never getting to it yeah, because we ahead. we actually get along really well and we like talking to we each other. We just start talking bullshit and we forget we forget where we are. Anyway, go ahead. So, so I have I have three different topics of stories and I'll let you pick which one you want me to go first on. 
Okay, okay go ahead. Me, g- me getting shanked slash stabbed. Okay. I think we need to hear that. Me but go passing ahead. out and hitting the walls with my braces, or me peeing slash pooping myself. What of. I asked you if you pooped yourself, you said no. I know, but I didn't want to tell that until now. Okay. Gosh. How do I choose? I wish we could have like a live. Listen, I was an alcoholic, like, okay? So I did some yeah, stupid Yeah, Mine is not funny at all. It's actually really tragic. <laughs> oh, no. Not tragic, but I mean like. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Not tragic, but you would go like, oh, she's an alcoholic. Like, well, not. No, it's just, mine's totally an I'm alcoholic. The, yeah, the yeah. shanking one's probably not really my fault, but the other ones are. Okay. Which one do you um, want? Um, I feel like I feel like I want to hear the shanking one, but then I also now like the the peeing pooping one well, at the same well, they're both time. Different. Oh, the peeing was a different time than the pooping? I didn't really pee myself. I slid into my pee. And then the poop is what? Is very different. A different and that's time. That's something I've never told before and Jesus Christ, I can't believe I'm saying this. sorry <laughs> to the the I person guess. above. Jamie, um, I'm going to have to go with the pooping one, right? I Yeah. I'm going to have to go. I know because I have you at this perfect point of like you're mixing Luke Belair with wine and like you, you know. I can't believe I'm about to tell like <laughs> so many people. This I story. have you in this moment and like you need to just the do it. The only person who knows this is my husband and I lied to him about the first time too because I never went to admit it. Okay. Okay, here we go. Here it goes. Here we go. This is so embarrassing. I, I love you guys, straight, by the way, because I'm telling straight you straight to the shit. camera while straight. you're saying it. I'm, I'm just joking. Go- <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm going to make deep love yeah, with the camera. Yeah, be very okay, intentional so about it. Okay, so I'm on my first real deployment, right? So I'm in Afghanistan, and I'm there for six months, and I'm in my last week of my deployment. And the last week, you get transitioned back to LUD, which is in Qatar. And uh, that's like your first glimpse of alcohol in like the real world again, right? But so, you're in Qatar. I'm in Qatar. Okay. But they have, you're allowed to have they alcohol. Have, okay. You're allowed to have three drinks. You're allowed to have like three beers or three shots or whatever. And there's like a town there or you it's, do no, it? No, it's like the base still. Okay. Like you're still on base. But so you it's can called, drink there. It's called Tent City. Yeah. You're allowed certain amounts. They like keep track of it. However, I had some buddies there who um, purposely like kept all their shots every day like they took three they got three shots every day and kept it in a water bottle so they had a whole water bottle full of vodka for me by the time i got back from afghanistan like it was like a bro okay, thing like yeah, they yeah, were hooking yeah. me up yeah yeah they're like so here you go i had alcohol Let's- right and i excuse me i hadn't drank in super long so before i went on the deployment just a little backstory i found out that my husband at the time was like cheating on me and had lied to me for the last two years and so i was dealing with a very busy deployment which my leadership didn't even want me to go on because i was like the first female ever to deploy to a combat zone let alone afghanistan and it was a huge deal so there's right. a lot of pressure on me yeah so i performed very well and i was dealing with the shit in my marriage right. during the whole time too which i had to back burner it so the minute that i got to drink and kind of just relax with my friends you went I took it for it i went so for it you had the and stress behind I you, t- you I had a lot had of stress the, yeah. so i was 100 percent willing to chug the booze which i did sure so there was a contractor hanging out with us this night that we were hanging out in tent city and i was with one of the girls jasmine and a couple other seer guys and this contractor his nickname was amber crombie okay because he's super hot. And he was, because he looked like a motherfucking Amber Crummy right. model. Okay. And he was sexy as shit. Sure. Super sexy. He like kept feeding me the booze and feeding me the booze. Right. And I'm, you know, like feeding myself the booze. And I remember at one point in the night, he was driving us like on the base. <laughs> I don't right. know if he was supposed to be. He was driving us from like Tent City, I think, to like some karaoke place. And all I remember was like, you are so fucking hot. And if I was not married, I'd fuck you right now. And even though my, my yeah, husband's right. even a though fucking, I'm not going to be married, like, even though my husband's a cheater, I'm not a cheater, but I would. I just want to let you know. Like, I had to right. tell him. You were just being awesome, basically. I was, someone was, someone, like, were were, everyone was laughing about it the next so day, awesome. going, like, you were so honest. You were really but you aggressive. But you had a lot of yeah. self-control, which <laughs> yeah. you really appreciate. Sure. I ended up drinking so much that night. Right. To the point where my girlfriend brought me back into my dorm room like the room i was staying in for that last week and i don't remember shit i completely blacked out but all i remember (laughs) so have you seen the (laughs) so have you seen the girls who do those glute exercises 
Have you seen those glute exercises where like they're they're like the the upper back is laying on the bench, but their like bottom half is yes. like up up on the ground. Okay, and it so, looks really yeah, it uh, looks like they're having sex. And yeah, stuff. yeah, 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 in a really uncomfortable way. So I was passed out in that position. No joke, my upper body was stuck on the bed but my lower body was down below off of it and i had my pants like slightly pulled down and i had literally shit <laughs> in my pants like so big you old i literally had big old turds <laughs> like big fucking hawking turds in, in moments like this do my you ever are you always like gosh the like the the surveillance footage of whatever happened like it's it doesn't exist There's right no footage, it doesn't exist but if I'm you think you right about now. it okay so you had you so had listen, clearly I, like slid off i slid off the bed and I pulled down pulled your pants, down my pants slightly and, and I like thought, i must have thought pooping. that i must have poop i don't know all i know is that i woke up and i looked down with my pants slightly pulled down and i went like really oh confused my gosh. And scared like oh my god and i was like oh there's pooping in my pants <laughs> and i just went and the first thing i did was i waddled over to the door to make sure it was locked because I thought J Jasmine like dropped me off in my room and I think she like, came to check in to make sure I was okay. You're like, do not check but in on me. thank the fucking God that apparently my door locked because all okay, I remember good. was the next morning asking Jasmine like, did you check Did you check me on me? Did you check on me? Yeah, like, did you I come mean, back in my room? It, it's okay if you did. I was just like wondering if you yeah. like maybe peeked in or and just And she was like, like no, your me. door was locked. I was like, thank, thank fucking God, God. Because I pooped. And so what I did was... I took napkins and they were in my room and I was literally right next to the exit door and I like just flung the shit out of my pants. <laughs> and then I- Wait, did you have a bathroom in your room? No, no you there don't. was no bathrooms in the room. You had to walk actually pretty damn far to go to the bathroom. So you like flung it out. So I just flung it out over the side of the like- Which is probably you're thinking at night. You were like, probably like- Trailers. Dude. So we were in trailers basically. So I flung it out over the, the rail of the trailers and i didn't even wipe my ass i was still super fucking drunk i just took off my pants bottled them up in a corner and just went back to sleep with poop still in your i butt. had no idea i did not know and I it was like really that you fuck. were that wasted all i know is the next morning i it like all came to and i was like who the fuck am i what the fuck did i do right how did i get that drunk i'm never telling anyone this in my entire life blammo you're welcome <laughs> here you are Oh my lord! And I washed my pants, but I was still so hungover slash drunk that I washed my pants with other items. What? Yeah, which had oh kind with of, other with other clothing clothes. items. I don't know why I did, but I washed them probably about two or three times. I literally put them two or three times to the wash, and then all I promised myself was, I will never tell anyone in my entire life. So drinking broettes. You're welcome. I must really love you. Cheers. Well, you might be drunk a little bit. I I would say that I'm not even drunk. I'm just, I would feel like a slight tipsy. Yeah, just a little Madame. tip. Just but a little yeah. tip. So, but here's the thing. While I, listen, we all have these moments. <laughs> <laughs> here's the thing. <laughs> what? We all shit our pants. Here's the thing. Every once in a while. While I, we all have moments. We all. And that is the moral of the story, That's I think. the moral of the story. We all That's a up. good moral. Okay, so by the way, I just told my embarrassing story, the most embarrassing story I think mm. I have. So now it's your turn, Miss mm -mm, Jesse mm -mm, Wiseman. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. So I don't know. Don't you? I don't know me. I want you to think deep into the depths of the vault that you have, because I know you have a deep vault. Well, so my last DUI that I got, what? I was <laughs> in my wait, you got in DUI my car, support? and I went to Del Taco and was eating a burger. Got pulled over for driving maybe two miles an hour. So this, got, wait, are you for real right now? Yeah. You got DUI? Yeah. I was like two five. That's why I'm like, it's, tra it's tragic. You're years old? No, I was 0. .25. Oh, shit. Okay. Like, it was like, I should not, I shouldn't have been alive. And I just go like, what? So in my, like so I said, wasted. like, you're wasted so out of your mind. So I'm so let's wasted, start from the but the, on this. Yeah. I don't know what the beginning was. Oh, so you're I mean, I was out. just like dr drinking. And then again, I, I stopped for a burger and I was in LA. So mm -hmm. I was on a, a street that was busy. Mm -hmm. Like you, like there's no street in LA that you, sh that you can even go two miles an hour unless there's traffic. So True. at night it's just like, I'm on the street eating a burger and going two miles an hour and i i'm again i don't really remember that much of it but i just think of 
like I said, the surveillance of the moment, right? Where you're mm-hmm. just like, <clears throat> so the cop is behind me and I'm just like, you just see this car. I mean, going so slow, bro. And like, I must have, and I was full on eating a burger, but I must not have even thought I was driving. So I must have been like full on just like eating like I was in a restaurant or something and uh-huh. just going like, one mile an hour i don't even know yeah anyways got pulled over got a f- obviously a full-on so DUI. Did, you, did you try to flirt with the cop at all oh like, my in god your drunken state where you're like hey cop like and like i don't think i hear my boobs. i try and like i tried to like i think i probably tried to cry or something <laughs> like force a tear yeah but like i mean you're c- you're caught, but I, I almost am like, how long did they follow me? Yeah. Like that, right? Of just like, at first look at like, this maybe she's bitch. just looking for something. What and is then- going on? Like, what is the deal? Like, this person is bar- barely moving yeah. on like a pretty busy street. So they initially pulled you over for going too slow. Yeah, I mean, but I think they could but that- probably tell. Listen, my mom said pulled. My mom must have been swerving. Has gotten pulled over for going too slow. And she was sober as fuck. Yeah. Because she just drives. My mom just drives. She got pulled over for going too slow. Too slow. Sober. The cop pulled her over and was like, you are going way too fucking slow. You are a menace to society. You need to drive faster. Drive the fucking speed limit, woman. Which is so funny because when we were younger, my mom had asked us as kids, hey, if there's anything about me you could change, what would you change? And she was like bracing herself for some like yeah, radical like, shit. The big thing? And my sister and I both went, you need to drive faster. And she went. Oh, God, I must have done a great job. She's like, well, there could be she worse must have things. Felt so good. So I can only imagine. So maybe maybe the cop was like, maybe she's trying to look for Again, something. Like, I don't maybe know. Maybe she's slowing down to find where a restaurant is. And then I don't would- have really good, like, clear cut <laughs> stories. Right. Because I was saying so like, blacked out. I was a full on. I mean, alcoholic. Right. Must have been. I was, too. I feel like. But I was a bartender. Thank God for all my friends who remember like, everything, supposedly. Yeah. So I wasn't with anybody at that point. Right. Yeah. I was in my car by myself. What's well, good, though. Um, so you're being smart about your DUIs, at oh least. <laughs> so, Can yeah. So that? I don't have like I don't have like fun poop my pants stories. Listen, Do you know what I mean? That's not a fun story. I have that's like ruin your ruin your life DUI stories. And then like, again, I have just sort of. uh like gray out, brown out, not brown sure. out. Sure, great. No, Didn't Dan don't tell you us Dan that it had said to, it was brown. Yeah, it's no. gray out people. I had gray weird, out. I have weird like gray out kind of stories, yeah. right? Like I used to work at this place called Ye Rustic Inn, and I remember we. It was one of those places that you drink on the job, right? Mm-hmm. So by oh, cool. if you do like a because it's a total dive, like all the sure. girls are just like tragic. So by the end of the night, you're cleaning up, you're still drinking, and we would like cook sausages on, do you know the coffee, like warmer, you know those like old school coffee makers where it's like the, yes, the, a little burner. the glasses on the bottom and then there's like a hot burner on the top so you yeah. can put this on. So we were like cooking sausages like drunk on, there? on the like warmer part, you know, and then my friend was eating like cold wings from the walk-in. So... I again, I don't have cute poop your pants stories. What about which shanking is a very, stories? Like, there's no shanking. You've been stabbed before. I think at some point, well, you need to tell the the stab story before Listen, we go for sure. I I teach a hand to hand combat slash weapon takeaway lesson, whether it's weapons like a knife or a gun, and yeah. this is like my motivational. Listen, guys, I've been shanked before, so you have to fucking listen to me. <laughs> type of story. How does that make to you the expert? Students. You obviously got shanked, well, so you I'm weren't saying, able I didn't to know what I had to do then. So now I. So know now, now you know. Okay, so what happened? Okay, so um, first year of college, at my university, um, I'm hanging out with a few of my girlfriends and a bunch of like football um dudes downtown. We all. So I told my parents, like, I'm very honest. This with is my downtown parents. where? Okay, so I live. I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri. Okay. And I'm super honest with my parents, like probably way too honest with my parents. And I went home before I think I went downtown. And I said, yeah, hey, I'm going down to Morgan Street, which is like not a great area. Hey, I'm going downtown St. Louis and we're going to go hang out for Mardi Gras. I'm a parent, and my dad was like, I highly recommend you do not go there. And I said, why not? And he goes, that area is dangerous. Some type of trouble is going to happen. You guys are going to get like it's shanked. not it's not good. He's going right. to say shank, but he, he didn't ever expect that. But he's he like, shanked. don't you dare 
I'm recommending you don't. And of course, you know, you're like, fuck you parents when you're at that age. So I didn't listen. We went down, I think <laughs> at you, like mom and dad. seven, eight o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. Right. We were all underage. So we all had fake IDs. We all were pre-drinking beforehand. So we didn't want to get caught by the cops. So we were down there around like seven, eight. We hung out till 11 p.m. We're all out in the streets because we didn't go into any of the bars. We're, you know, there's beads getting thrown. We're drinking. We have drinks with us. It's a, it's a blast. It's a great time. And so as 11 o'clock starts to roll around, more and more people are starting to get really wasted because they've been drinking the whole day. And literally guys are getting so upset that girls weren't showing their tits like up in certain buildings and bars Mm because there's like so we're all in like brick buildings and girls are up, you know, like three or four stories and they're not showing their tits or they are. Yeah. And guys weren't having it. So they were literally throwing their glass beer bottles up at the buildings and glass is like spraying on everyone down the crowd and fights start breaking out like crazy. So when it's not, when it's not actually New Orleans, like, You shouldn't really be doing but Mardi that, Gras. No, I know, right? But it, it was just a, never it really works out there. in the right way. Yeah. So we all looked at each other and we we're like, let's get the hell out of Dodge because this is not good. And all of a sudden we start we start seeing cops starting to check, you know, a bunch of people's drinks and seeing what they had. And we didn't want to get caught. So we started like a string of people, right? Where you have the person's hand in front of you. You have the person's hand behind you. So we stay together in this crowd and we're all like kind of walking together. I'm second to last. My buddy Tim's behind me. Um, we start walking and I will just say this we're in east st louis we're in st louis it's primarily like you know a darker crowd right so um my buddy tim gets hit in the head by someone on accident listen you're in a fucking crowd full of people dude hey you might take an elbow or something stop being a pussy fucking walk walk (laughs) along walk along pal okay right so tim gets hit in the head by an elbow on accident not purposely he turns around and says the n-word oopsie daisy like hard R in it. We would never. Yeah. And all I feel also I feel like a jerk of my hand because he stops and I'm like, what the fuck's going on? So of course, there goes Tiffany, has to be a hero. Cause I had I stopped all the fights in college, so I had to stop this one. I see him and some random, you know, dude about to fight it out because he called him the N-word. Right. And I was just kinda like, Really? To be fair. I mean he, he deserved it. But yeah. Oh my God. So I looked at the dude and he was actually, he was really nice. I said, Hey man, listen, I put my he's hand, wasted. On his, I, had, I put my, hit my hand on his chest. I said, we don't want to start shit. Listen, he's a he's, fucking idiot. He's, he's stupid only racist shit. when he's drunk. I he's promise. Stupid. He did not mean to say that. Listen, I'm so sorry. And the guy was kind of like, Oh, Hey girl, what's up? Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. Like type of thing. And I was like, sure. okay, cool. Like I, I'm okay with this. Right. Cause he's not trying to fight me. This is great. Right. So I said, hey, man, I, I am so sorry. He calmed down. We were getting out of there. The minute that I start to walk away, his girlfriend <laughs> comes out of the crowd out of nowhere and grabs my hair and says, bitch, get the fuck back here. Are you flirting with my dude? And I oh was gosh, like, no, uh, uh, no. And this chick is no joke. No, no joke. I'm not over exaggerating. Like probably 230, okay. 250. Okay. Okay. Deuce and a half. And sure. she's, a, she's a big broad. Right, right, right. And I was like, no, 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 no. And I, by the way, I hate fighting. I don't like fighting. So I didn't want to fight. I always broke up the fights. And, and she's like, were you flirting with my dude? And I was like, no, I was not. Listen, my buddy was acting like an idiot. I'm sorry. Let's, we're trying to get out we're of here. We're just trying to leave. And so all of a sudden, she like starts to come at me. And she gets pulled away by her friends. So then I was like, cool. But then all of a sudden my hands go behind my back and I'm like, I don't know who has me. So I have hands behind my back and people are grabbing me and I don't know who they are. Is it your buddies? No, it people it's not my buddies. Oh it's my random God. strangers. So we have people holding her and people holding me thinking we were about to fight. Right. And all of a sudden a circle breaks out around us and I'm like, dude, what the fuck's going on? Right. And uh, she starts talking more and more shit. Like she's getting hyped by this. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like the whole no, time, no, 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 no. you know, like, no, I don't want this. And uh, they let that bitch go. They, they let go of her arms or she gets out of it, whatever. And they still have your hands. And they still have my hands. And she starts running towards me. It felt like it was in slow motion. You know what I mean? Like Clearly. you see every piece of fat on her body just like right like super slow motion right and all i thought to myself was i'm not a fighter i don't do this but i need to defend myself what the fuck do i have available to fight with and i'm a track runner i'm a collegiate track runner i'm a sprinter i have fucking strong ass legs so i have two dudes holding my hands behind my back so i decided to buck up off of them and Mm -hmm. kick her in the chest like fucking no joke spartan style nice 
and I knocked the wind out of her like she couldn't breathe so she fell to the ground she started huffing and puffing you know sure and the minute that my arms got let go of because I did after I kicked her I felt a nice scratch that's all it was it felt like a scratch on my side that's it all I know is to do to my right got hit in the head by a beer fucking by a beer bottle Okay, and glass start breaking all over. I try to get away. I had one of my buddies, James, pick me up out of nowhere and carry me off to the side because a huge fight started to break out. Right. After that, um, you know, a couple other girls come at, came up and tried to fight me, but then other girls were defending me going, no, she didn't start shit. Like, she was trying to break it up, and then it all stopped. Thank God. And some old woman, this is probably the most peculiar thing of the night, an older woman, no joke, probably in her 70s, maybe 80s, comes up and it's probably like 11 30 at night and she comes up with a little like little thing of kleenexes right like you know like the little purse pocket thing yeah of kleenexes, yeah, yeah that they and like she goes, always have oh honey like you're you're bleeding you need these kleenexes and i look like, down gushing. and by the way like i'm wearing like a a, a purple crop top type of thing and slut. my sis super slow go ahead and, and my sister's yellow sweatpants that like high-waisted sweatpants from victoria's secret is mardi gras purple and yellow okay. don't you look at me like that like i'm like so you're in st louis like you don't know bro. how to dress i'm in st louis so purple and yellow so i'm wearing purple sweatpants yeah, right yeah they're yeah. like crop sweatpants and all i know is i see my skin curled open completely <gasps> bleeding profusely on my sister's sweatpants which by the way if you ever borrowed your sister's clothes before she's like i, don't know the I sister, will let you but... wear this but you better not ruin it because if you do you're gonna owe me all the money for it and i can imagine yeah that's all i cared about at the time you're like dude she's gonna be she's so gonna kill me pass out i didn't care about my skin curl yeah, wide open and the fact so that you much could blood. see like yeah. white you know like shit in my skin so of course i'm you know we drank so we walked away. We finally all walked away. We went to Quick Trip, which is a gas station. We got butterfly band-aids and needle spore, and the guys put them on me. I decided not to go to the hospital at night because I was concerned because I was underage drinking. I didn't want yeah, to tell yeah, my parents yeah. yet. You never want to. Right? Yeah. So I went to my parents the next morning, and I remember I sat on the kitchen counter. And I was like, hey, mom, dad, I got a story to tell you. I told him the exact story, and oh, my, mom, my mom's face just dropped. She's Horrified. like, we're taking you to the hospital right now. By the way, our moms... Yeah. What they had to deal with. Jeez, I the fact feel that terrible we for are her. even alive. Like I, I have stories like that too. Like I have just these like crazy nights where you're just no. like, dude, yeah. I should not be fucking alive. I know. Dude. My mom was. My I mom got into that, that car, or I did that, or I went to that fucking random place with like I was the only girl or like do you know right? what I mean? you think of those kind my of my mom shit? told me that that moment when i talked to her she's like you're lucky you're still alive and they didn't get you somewhere place else and all i remember was people asking me like what i got stabbed with and stuff i'm like listen i don't know it was oh, no. obviously a clean cut all i know is when she took me to the hospital the next day it's funny you call me a slut because the lady who actually did my stitches she started she started to ask me a bunch of questions she's like wait did it did it cut your clothing and yeah I, and i was like no it didn't no she i goes, didn't have any what were you wearing yeah yeah. And I was like, yeah. well, I was wearing a crop top and high-waisted sweatpants. You. And she goes, why she was your you. belly exposed? Yeah. And no joke, my mom saw this. And my mom being protected, mama bear goes to the lady, doesn't excuse matter. me, why does it matter what my daughter was wearing? Love it. How about you just put on her liquid stitches so we can get out of here? I love it. So you got liquid stitches? I got liquid stitches. Gross. So the problem is if you wait too long to get stitches, right? They have to give you liquid stitches because if they give you normal stitches, you can it can cause an infection. So sh they literally had to... Thank God I was in great shape then. As a track runner, they had to squeeze my skin together at the time yeah. on my hip and give me liquid like, stitches. And it looked like, honestly, like I had a leech on my skin. My sister. It, okay, where it was like a like, scar was, that was like was a little bit. It was very up. bumpy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, it looked like a leech just hanging out. My sister made fun of me it for the longest time and said it was the grossest thing. And now I just, I mean, I got a tattoo kind of over it. But it's funny because I forget that I even have it until someone goes, wait, what's that? Is that a tattoo? Wait, what's that scar? I'm like, oh, yeah, I got stabbed. And they're like, excuse me. And so then there fun. comes the story. Lucky. So all I know I is never that the next stabbed. day in college, literally everyone was talking about it. Dude, Tiff got stabbed, man. You're like, a legend, what a dude. Badass. And I was You're like, a legend, bro. How is that cool that I got stabbed? Doesn't it mean that I'm a weak ass bitch who obviously couldn't defend herself? No. But yeah, there we have it. That's you know the story. It's cool. You so, know it's cool. Don't act like you don't know it's cool. 
I mean, I'll, I'll. It's pretty fucking badass. And also in college too, where you're like, even do you remember when like someone would break their leg, yeah. even if it like wasn't in a cool way, no, you're like oh. they would tell it. Yeah, they, but it was like cool. so cool. <laughs> you're like, you fucking broke your leg, dude. You have a fucking scar. Now it's dude, like tragic, but you know you were badass, and you know you felt badass. Too. I always remember everyone tried asking to look at it. Okay. Right? They're like, hey, can I look at the wound? And the doc the doc had like patched it up and they said, Listen, don't take this patch, like don't take this band-aid off for and at least you a just week. kept you lifted it at every no, I didn't. every turn. I lifted up my shirt and I was like, Here you go, that's <laughs> it. And they were like, Oh my god, that's huge when in reality it wasn't really that big. Yeah. But people thought I just kept thinking to myself, like, I don't know, I had a different perspective about fighting after that. After that I wanted to learn how to fight. Particularly yeah. no, so I can I mean, defend myself. I think definitely once you're in a weird, like vulnerable situation like that. Oh yeah. I need I want to know how to defend myself. I'm so glad I know how to now and I teach people how to do it yeah. for a living. Definitely. And that's why I use it as motivation. Like, hey, listen, turds. I didn't know how to defend myself. Probably like most and of you guys. You found yourself either. in a situation where you were literally like hands behind your back. Oh yeah. Someone's coming towards you. Yes. What do you do? I had no you idea. You had to be resourceful and crafty. And I wasn't probably in the best state of mind. I wasn't like super wasted. Like I was with it, but I was yeah. still tipsy. You yeah. know what I mean? Do you teach people about the pooping in your pants part? No. Or is dude, that, no, you listen. don't teach them how to not do that? Because that could be a class that I could maybe teach because I've never. Do you know what I mean? No. But like, yeah. So you I'm gonna teach, be people, that you if teach I have a- people how to defend themselves and then I'll just be like, hey, here's how you don't poop in your pants. I don't know how, but like I just never have. Just don't be that fucked up to do it. I'm going to regret telling this story. I'm not no, even kidding. I'm going to regret it. It's so it. good. I, I used to honestly, live in this house. I used to live in this house with like a bunch of, you know, when in college as well. Yeah. And um, there was this girl that would always use this shitty couch that we had in the in the living room as a toilet. And I just, I think that. What? It was just this thing where she would get drunk and she would like be in her bed and walk out. Like we would all be out there like playing video games or like hanging out drinking. She would come out. And just pee on the couch? Pull her pants down, sit down just exactly like she's in the bathroom, pee. And it's this couch that we like knew you just don't sit on the couch because this girl's going to come out and like it's her bathroom. And she would die if she knew the next day, right? But like she would come out in this like glazed over state. You you couldn't even, you don't want to wake her up because it's like if she's, you know, if you wake people up, they're sleepwalking. I've heard that. It's bad. Don't do it. So we would all just like pause the game or whatever and she would just like. Sit down on the couch, pee, pull her pants back up, and go back into her room. And we're but just drunk. like, ah, oh, yeah, drunk. And we're just like, ah, oh, fuck, dude. And it's like, we have to keep the same couch because we don't want to get a new one and have her do it again. Wait, please don't tell me I went sat on that couch. No, we wouldn't like- tell. If we didn't like you, we wouldn't tell you. But for the most part, <laughs> everyone knew. Everyone that's knew that up. that's like her bathroom couch or whatever. Yeah. This Gross. is my pee pee anyways, couch. Come to find out, listen. It's me. I had a cousin who used to sleepwalk when he was. Spoiler alert: this is That when was he me. Was younger. No, I'm just joking. Yeah, right. <laughs> no. That was actually me. Listen, we can be best friends. I've shit myself. You pee couches. No, I don't. This is the best friendship. I don't. I wish I had a better story. Okay, well, Mine is just like eating a burger then, so. and driving super slow mm-hmm. and having cops laugh behind me. I'm sure for like a mile. Mm-hmm. They're just like, "What are we gonna do I with this with fucking that. bitch?" Right? I could do. Um. Do we need check. to go out and do some uh, dumb bo- boomerangs and we take do. some drunken selfies. Yeah. So uh, do you want to, uh, I know who you're going to nominate. Yeah, and I have a I drinking think, brewette of the week. Yeah, I've never met her, but I yeah. really want to. And You've I know she's. Her. I've heard about her from and me. I know she's from you and actually from Jared as well. And yeah. so I know that oh, she's yeah. like someone pretty big in this space. And I'd like to, until again, until you guys... Um, submit we get into the group and we earn your trust and we get to get uh, submissions from you guys and all of this mm-hmm. until then we're just going to nominate cool people in the space that we like so, yeah. so who well, is your my, gal my nominee for this week is Tara Keen which aka I'm terrible aka just another day AKA, in paradise aka is that funny super hot bitch that's funny just another day in paradise she came up with that hashtag <laughs> isn't that awesome that's good that's okay, good. so first of all, if you guys look up I'm Terrible on Instagram, you guys will see a gorgeous woman. She okay. military? She was prior military, okay. prior Marines, fucking okay. badass. Nice. Um, but you'll see a gorgeous woman. And a lot of people will see her for her looks and go, ugh, right? She is by far, hands down, one of the most loveliest women I've ever met in my life. By far, 
one of the biggest hearts that you can have for people she has she's always willing to help them she's constantly doing you know any type of um fundraisers or donations anything that she gets from social media like any money she makes she literally is giving away yeah towards organizations and um, we are going to want to have her on at some point oh I yeah we're definitely gonna really have her on for some point she is more than her looks people judge her on her looks which by the way she's fucking stunning but she is she she's just an amazing cool. person yeah and she loves people and a badass. she's super fucking funny she's hilarious she's got a great sense of humor she's one of my best friends out there and so this goes out to her for being that amazing friend that you can count on who's trustworthy who's honest who tells it like it is are you done with that you needed more Look booze cheers and well, we're gonna go out like yeah, I said, we're gonna boomerang and badass and yeah. i cheers love to women you, like that i can't wait to meet you the whole package tara you fucking rock i love your face you rock my socks off and you give me guess what you sh- guess what she gives me jesse what guess what she gives me a lady boner get her out of here get her out of here <laughs> i can't even handle it right now get oh her my out god here. all right i love you guys love You're you awesome. i am jesse wiseman she is tiffany hart she is military i just play one on tv you are what at at the real tiffany hart and i am jesse wiseman on all the bullshits yeah thank you love you guys Good night. Night. where are we going drink your face where should off. we go to all the bars <laughs> I'm gonna do alcohol We're tonight. Not- yeah, you've been watching every move and plotting your next move on every girl I'm moving on. Yeah, don't y'all better things to do.